2022 marks 10 years of legacy. That's 10 years of advocating on behalf of recreational fishers. Over that 10 years, our team has grown and so has our supporter database. We can't thank you enough for sticking beside us as we continue the good fight for more fish in the water and for future generations. This was an intense year for the legacy team and we're proud to say that we advocated for keeping public say within our fisheries and we managed to achieve some really positive wins. In November 2021, the government released a fisheries amendment bill which included the legislation necessary to roll out cameras on vessels. The bill contained preset decision rules which only used industry supplied data to measure the sustainability of our fish populations and also included clauses that would lessen our public say in issues to do with the ocean. Our team reacted strongly, submitting a response to the select committee asking to remove preset decision rules from the bill. We ran a public campaign, generating 6,400 submissions in support of our stance. We thought the bill was going to pass through unchanged, but at the last minute, the Oceans and Fisheries Minister, David Parker, made a decision to pull the preset decision rules from the bill and keep the legislation required to progress with cameras on vessels. Thanks to public pressure, the sustainability of our fish species and our public say in our fisheries remains safe for another day. We want to thank everyone who made a submission in support of our staff. A recent survey has shown that the majority of New Zealanders want to remove bottom trawling and scallop dredging from the Hodaki Gulf Marine Park. In 2021, the government released a draft fisheries plan that will continue to allow bottom trawling, scallop dredging and Danish seining to continue throughout the Gulf. A government-led survey showing low numbers of scallops meant in March 2022, Minister Parker decided to close the last remaining commercial scallop fisheries in New Zealand. Only two small areas were left open for commercial fishing, Little Barrier and Colville Channel in the Coromandel scallop fishery. Then, in December, another survey later in the year showing even lower numbers of scallops prompted the Minister to close these last two remaining open areas. This action was necessary for our scallop populations to have a chance of recovery, but we don't think enough has been done. We continue to advocate for a ban on all scallop dredging and support alternative harvest methods for when the fishery reopens. Over the past year, we've worked really hard to build a volunteer program that we're proud of, but also our volunteers are excited to be a part of. Our team of volunteers have clocked in just over 545 hours over the past year. Our volunteers have been a fundamental part of our events and they've allowed us to move into spaces with aligned organisations such as the Waiheke Marine Project, um, Sea Cleaners and NIWA. The growth of our volunteer program means that whenever um, our supporters ask us what more can I do to help, it means that we can just point them to the next event. I just want to say a huge thank you to all the volunteers who have been a part of this epic journey for the last year and I look forward to a 2023 with you. We've worked alongside Turkish Bread this year to provide a really fun and exciting game uh, to help educate people of all ages about fish species in their backyard, in their fishery, in their coastal waters. Turkish Bread took our Hika card game and turned it into a series of collectible cards and they've put them in every single pizza base throughout the country. The response has been overwhelming with over 2 million of these cards distributed throughout New Zealand uh, as well as through New Zealand Fishing News distributing over 10,000 of the posters of these cards throughout their magazine issue. The 2022 Hutch Wilco New Zealand Boat Show was a very successful event for our team and we raised awareness about the destructive nature of bottom trawling and dredging in the Hauraki Gulf. Uh, so over the three days we got over 1,600 signatures and with our Hands Off My Bottom slogan. The Legacy Hawks Bay team had a momentous year. A highlight was the ongoing success of the two biggest artificial reefs in the country, constructed by Napier Port, with support from the Legacy Hawks Bay team. Now, species such as blue cod and crayfish call these reefs home 
and the Legacy Hawke's Bay team are working with mana whenua to monitor and expand the reef habitats. Alongside the New Zealand Sport Fishing Council Fisheries Management Team, we've responded to various government proposals affecting the abundance of fish species, um, local marine protection and nationwide legislation. In 2022, we put forward 24 submissions, took part in stakeholder working groups and parliamentary processes. We have been invited on media outlets uh, such as News Hub, Seven Sharp and The Breakfast TV Show um, to talk about certain issues all around the country that are important to us all. Earlier in the year, I was lucky enough to be invited to, to do a TED Talk in Auckland here to talk about the Kaika project, the history, the ethos around maximum utilisation and around fish conservation. It's a really cool platform to be able to explain what the Kaika project is all about on an international level um, and share our story around maximum utilisation. Later in the year, we were blessed with the Governor General, Dame Cindy Kiro, visiting the Papatunuku Kokiri Mirai and the Kaika project to understand what we are all about in terms of our waste minimization, feeding the community and conserving fish for future generations. Even the rain couldn't stop us. We distributed over 1,000 kilograms on that day so the Governor General could see how important our kaupapa is to the community of South Auckland. To keep up with the increasing demand, our filleting service down at West Haven ZPR is now operating seven days a week. This filleting service, it's a win all round. One, we raise revenue so we can pay for running costs, we can pay for fuel costs and manpower. Two, we get our hands on more fish heads for the community. And three, recreational fishermen, they don't have to worry about the hassle of cleaning their own fish. The only way we can continue to fight the good fight is through our partners who have stood beside us through thick and thin and continue to support us every step of the way. Whitehaven launched a promotion in July where 100% of the Koperiperi wines that were sold, the proceeds were donated to Legacy. Through this campaign, we saw over $33,000 generated for Legacy. Barkers, they continue to produce the really cool Legacy summer range that are available in stores nationwide and they've sold thousands and thousands of garments throughout the entire country. We're really excited to welcome Bailey's on board as a platinum partner off the back of their recent Bailey's Fishing Classic, which saw over $60,000 raised on our behalf. So that's a huge chunk of change that will help us conserve fish for future generations and make sure we can all go out there and catch a feed when we need to. Another collaboration we're super proud of is with Victory Knights. So they've teamed up with the Kaika project to produce the Kaika branded Victory Knife set, which saw 100% of the profits donated to the Kaika project. We're quite fortunate to have such a large community of corporate partnership, and we're really proud to welcome on a lot more platinum, gold, building, and work partners also. 2022 was a whopper of a year for Legacy and we're expecting 2023 will be much of the same. There are still fisheries issues that we need your support on, but we would like to say thank you. Thank you for the support and thank you for the year that we had.